as I wrote in Dear Miss Landau, I was enjoying writing about Drusilla and having her around. Sometimes homicidal, but always sweet. We were an odd couple, the damaged, disabled man and his deranged flatmate. But she was my good companion in the wee small hours, when there was naught else in the world but she and I and roses. My name is James Christie, and I have Asperger syndrome, a mild form of autism. Not long ago, I wrote this book called Dear Miss Landau about my escape from a desperate life with the help of a crazy vampire from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Her name was Drusilla, Drusilla the Vampire. It all started when I went to work cleaning toilets at a motorway services. They were good people there. But then I went to work for the organization and they tortured me. Anyway. In the 14th round of the thriller in Manila, Muhammad Ali should have knocked Joe Frazier down six times, but Frazier's willpower kept him on his feet. Autists have a fragile side. Too much information can overload us too easily. But we do also have willpower. Six times and more, the organization tried to bludgeon me to my knees, and six times and more, I'd staggered and buckled and covered up against their onslaught and stayed on my feet. After six months sick leave, I started data entry work in August 2007. I was out of shape, half a stone overweight, and half dead with stress and fatigue. The radio noise, loudmouthed gossip, uncertainty, injustice, and endless waiting and hanging had hit me as hard as any punch Fraser ever received from Ali. My hand still quivered, that's my right hand here, and my processor, my information processor up here, was working even more slowly than usual, if that was possible. At the time, I honestly thought I had suffered permanent damage and would remain as I had become, even more slow thinking and less able to cope with change. In a word, punchy. I began re-establishing my routines, as we Aspergers do. I made myself walk home from work to shed the excess weight. Every evening I cleaned one part of my flat, and after that I would turn to my bookshelves and bring down my pride and joy, my brand new Buffy the Vampire Slayer DVD box set. Joss Whedon once said, He'd rather have a show that a hundred people need to see than a thousand like to see. And for most of 2008, I needed to see his show. It wasn't escapism. I'd seen too much of people's bad sides. But it was a relief to see the better side of human nature depicted. And Buffy could make even an autist empathise with its characters. So for most of 2008, I watched an episode every night and very slowly, I found myself beginning to take an interest in Spike's girlfriend, Drusilla. I sat there and slowly I began to see Drusilla. Like a favorite flower, she only bloomed at night in forgotten corners or just out of sight the tragic Ophelia to Buffy's loudmouthed Hamlet, otherwise known as Spike. Like Spike, Drew was indeed a killer, but in the same way that he was a lovelorn poet at heart, she was also a gentle girl. Even as a demon and a murderess, she was still sweeter and kinder at heart than the money-grubbing mediocrities to whom I had so recently been exposed. I did not really realise it at the time. But beneath the monster's mantle, I began to see the vulnerable girl, and she began to strike a chord. Over the course of 2008, the story which would become Drusilla's Roses began to assemble itself in my head, as my neural networks painstakingly 
began to restore themselves. I didn't know this was happening, still assuming I was punchy and probably going to stay that way, nor did I think to question why I suddenly seemed to be feeling such sympathy for a fictional character. Looking back now, after all the surreal and wondrous events which have since come to pass, I can only assume that some strange synchronicity was indeed at work. Drusilla seemed to be the only creature, real or imagined, who could touch my damaged soul and bring me back to the way I was. And it seemed that with my writing skills, I was the one chosen to develop her character. Quite unaware of this tapestry being woven around me, I grew more and more comfortable with the strange vampire girl now alive in my mind. And when I wished to see her, gliding shyly around my flat. Was it destiny that brought two lives together? I only know this. In December 2008, as the shape and form of Drusilla's roses began to coalesce in the mind of a man in a flat in Partick, a woman flew into Glasgow for a comics convention at Brayhead Shopping Centre. And neither James Christie nor Juliet Landau knew that seven weeks before roses began, they were less than two miles apart or that the other was there. Well, if you like that extract, then you'd definitely like to read my book, Dear Miss Landau, written by me, James Christie, and published by Chaplin Books.